Good morning, YouTubers. I wanted to share with you my batch stump rocket stove. After I built a few of these with clay, I realized how much you could customize them and sculpt those that clay into whatever shape you wanted. And so this particular one I built to look like a stump. I'm going to give you a quick walk around here. That's a butterfly or a firefly coat rack hook used for a door handle that I put a wood handle on. You can see the fire going in there. That fire opening is about two foot deep and 14 inches across. Give you a side shot. It's built up 18 inches off the ground. I put a like a chopped off limb on this side. I'm gonna hand it off to my cameraman and keep going here. Alright. So I call this a stump batch rocket stove. Um, it's probably more accurate than a stump batch mass heater. There's about 900 pounds of clay, sand, and brick there. Uh, I weighed, well, I don't know how many bags of clay and sand, and then I weighed the bricks to get that number. So it's about a half a ton of mass sitting there. Uh, it's setting up 16 inches. Them are just concrete blocks stacked up, mortared together. And I took a piece of uh, metal and put me a radius on the front, poured that with a couple bags, and then put rocks on it brought it up and put it like an inch and a half inch rock layer on top of that. And uh, inside of this, I want to show you how I built this. It's a little bit different. Come up and get you a shot of that, can you? It's got a layer of fire brick that the burn chamber is sitting on. And the fire brick was put in an arch and built in there. How I did that was, is I, I built a form, uh, that arch, and laid it there, and laid those fire brick, and put shims on the back side, and spread them out evenly, and then took clay and fire brick mortar, and filled in those cracks. And of course it's got a riser in it, it's also made out of fire brick. And I didn't have the, uh, uh, clearance to move my stove pipe in the back and I wanted it to go straight up. And I also didn't want to burn my barrel out. These barrels only last 10, 12 years depending on how much fire you get to them, how hot you get them, and how often. So what I did is I suspended a quarter inch cast iron plate an uh, inch and a half above the chimney stack here and it comes all the way out. Uh, it, comes, it comes down on three pieces of angle iron and it comes within an inch and a half of the edge all the way around. So that forces that heat to mushroom down, fill that barrel up, dis disperse that heat better than that barrel, and then come, it can come around it and come up and go straight up. Uh, forces a little bit more down here. Uh, so that's basically how it's, you know, that's how it's built. Uh, let me set this back down. Move that back up. One of the other things I did was this barrel up here at the top, I, this is a slip ring, it's got a bolt on it so you can open it up. And, uh, you know, soot's going to eventually build up in any kind of rocket stove, and I wanted to be able to get in there and clean that barrel up. So that's the slip ring up there, it's bolted on. So I can pick that chimney up, I can uh, take that slip ring off, and I can get down in there and clean that. Uh, as far as performance, this is a 1,200 square foot straw bale house. Uh, I burned two fires in this, and two fires it gets this clay up to about the temperature, uh, max temperature of somewhere around 140, 50 degrees, and uh, then that clay will stay that temperature for quite some time, sufficient to be able to build a fire, go to bed, and get up the next morning, still not be below 72 degrees in here. I'm burning all, right now I'm burning all oak, white 
white oak split and I'll burn three, four loads a day in a firebox that's 14 inches um, by two foot deep. And this is this door I built it out of eight inch steel and put a hinge on it. The reason I put a hinge on it is I'll put a hinge on it so I can get the bigger pieces in there. Um, the number of square inches that I have left over here, open here, is the same number of square inches my flue is. The intake must be equal to outtake for optimal airflow. Um, and that's if you've got a really roaring fire and if it's a little less of a fire, it takes even a little less air. Um, but in a rocket stove, uh, it burns a very hot, efficient fire and the reason it does that is because the uh, air really rushes over it. And generally speaking, in uh, Ianto Evans' book, he says uh, the square inches here should be slightly smaller than the square inches of your fluid. So that's what I did here. I've already burned it last winter. It's worked good. It hasn't cracked any. I used clay sand mix. I used Hawthorne refractory clay. Two parts, one part sand, and mixed straw in there as I built it up to hold it together. Once I got it built, I uh, covered it in uh, linseed oil. And I did a little dark areas in here with some, just some dark paint that I thinned out to try to give it some depth. So anyway, this is the uh, new batch rocket stove. Thanks for watching.